Live from the historic hand building in St. Paul, it's the Haberdasher's Couch, starring Jaime along with Orsette. This is Kendrick inviting you to join our guest, comedian and hypnotist, Amy Charlow. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Jaime. It's another Friday. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's always a pleasure to see you. Thank you, thank you. Down in front, nice to see you too. I tell you what, we got a big show today, so I want to get right to it. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sneak on this side and see what happens. See what happens. I'm going to introduce to you the one, the only, Mr. Keith Dorsett. Hey, there he is again. You know, you're always so charged on Friday. Like last Friday you were happy, this Friday you're happy. Are you ever not happy? They're all Fridays. Right, they're all Fridays. Happy but you Friday. Get Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday out of the way. Happy Friday. Friday is really not that big of a deal for us because Saturday is our Friday. Does that make sense? Sure, sure. It's like yeah. vacation. <laughs> hey, I tell you what, uh, have you ever been hypnotized? Maybe that's what I was when I came out, I, fucking like a chicken. I think it's a mind altering thing, right? Mind-altering thing. Well, make sure I, I won't be I getting that. I hypnotize some of our clients. We can get them in the store here and buy some suits. I tell you what. That's right. Look into the camera. We have a special guest. Over 15 years' experience being a comedian and hypnotist. She's certified. She does, she does uh, hypnotist therapy. Hypnotherapy, they're calling it. I'm cool with it all as long as all I'm not the victim. Big words. And so anyway... What we like to do, we're going to introduce Amy Charlo here in a few minutes. I want you to sit back, relax, and enjoy because you deserve it. Hi, I'm Amy, Amy the Hypnotist. Being a hypnotist came naturally to me because I am by nature incredibly boring. <laughs> it's easy for me to put people to sleep. <laughs> now, what I've been doing during the pandemic is the same thing as everybody. I have been indulging in the new normal as it calls. So because I am single, the first thing I did is I ran right out and got myself a little dog. I've never had a little dog. It's been 15 years since I've had a puppy. Never had a male dog. Never been so familiar with stopping at every mailbox <laughs> in the neighborhood. But I love the little guy, and he's, he is actually very little. He is a Pomeranian, so he's got a little bitty, itty bitty face, Aww. and he cannot get his full face around a tennis ball. So I get him these itty bitty little tennis balls. Aww. Aren't they cute? So he can get his little face around them. And he's learned to do quite a few tricks. He jumps through my arms, which is real cute. He does a little weave, weave through the leg. But I think the most clever thing that he has done so far is what he does is he can vocalize and turn on Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> he's done it several times now. And so one of these days, I'm going to come home, and there's going to be a big old truck backing up to my yard. <laughs> and it is going to be full of those little tennis balls that I just chucked across Jaime's haberdashery, and Anthony is now on his hands and knees trying to find. I've been doing other things. I've been doing a lot of keeping up with the news. Everybody been keeping up with the news? Totally no fun. The best thing in the newspaper is, of course, the horoscope. I have today's Pioneer Press. Help, help, I'm being held hostage at Jaime's haberdashery, and this is proof that I'm still alive. And one of the things in here is an article about how the astrological signs have actually changed. There is, this is actually, you can look this up, there is a professor at the U of M that discovered that our signs are actually wrong. So a friend of mine, because I am also a palm reader, came to me and she said, hey, Amy, I am madly in love with a Leo, which is a lion, the cat, but I happen to now discover that I am a Pisces, which is a fancy word for fish. And how can I attract this Leo that I love so much? And I said, you know, it's not about always what you like as a Pisces, the fish. Sometimes you need to see things from a little different perspective. Do a little research, dig deeper. 
look things from all around, and then you can discover not only what it is that you like, but what it is that he likes. Cat loves milk. Dear kitty kitty. <laughs> Here's to all the Leos out there. <laughs> Besides being a comedian, I also do a lot of therapeutic hypnosis. I help people do a lot of things. I help them lose weight, help them quit smoking, lose their fear of umbrellas. <laughs> I use a lot of metaphor in my work. So I'd like to introduce you to one of the metaphors that actually lives in my office. I bring to you, ladies and gentlemen, the gilted chair. <laughs> this is the chair exactly as I found it. This is the chair that lives in my office. This is the chair that I just walked down downtown St. Paul carrying, getting a lot of strange looks, <laughs> but I did it because it's important and I love you. <laughs> Feel the warm fuzzies right through the screen. Warm fuzzies. Yeah, don't you? Yeah. So here is the gilted chair. It came with this exact tag. It reads, I'm guilted, spelled as in, not like guilt, like on a gold frame, but I'm guilted in that I was, I was raised Lutheran. <laughs> now, my first thought was, I'm going to refinish this chair, but I've discovered it is so much more fun to just walk by it occasionally and insult it. <laughs> hey, if you hadn't let yourself go, you could be a prop for the Ordway right now. Yeah. Oh, oh, check out those legs. Those are awfully pale. You're definitely from Minnesota. You know what? You know, you know, yeah, you sit there like that. Why don't you just get join a nice dining set like your sister did? So there's my chair. It sits in my office, bearing witness to everything that happens. And my clients that are coming in now are really having sort of a crisis of identity. Who am I now? Now that the chair has been pulled out from under them, <laughs> who are you now? Like, am I really still a bank executive if I'm like hiding in the basement behind the toilet with like a towel shoved at the door and hiding from my kids, the new puppy, all the while like cuddled in my Heinie's high quality, beautifully tailored jacket that's now squished with little goldfish and, and, congrat and coagulated Cheerios? Am I still a bank executive then? So it brings up a lot of opportunity, as well as a lot of sort of emotional, almost a crisis of sorts. Um, who are you really? Are you really these identities that everybody has put out for you? You know, you are the dad, you're the mom, you're the caretaker, you're the, you know, you're the emotional one, you're the one that never gets things done. Whatever the identity, whatever people that want you to sit in and be, this is your opportunity. Now that the rules have changed, you get to be whoever you are. Maybe you're the innovative one. Maybe you're the creative one. Maybe you're a Zoom star. Who knows? Maybe you're an entrepreneur, an artist, a comedian. The point is that just because somebody pulls a chair out for you doesn't mean that you have to sit in it. It's all up to you, people. I believe in you. You believe in me, too. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for having me in your at Heinz Haberdashery. Thank you for taking the time to listen. Believe in yourself. You've got this.